Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank you today for committing a part of your day to prayer for our church. Uh, some of you are gathered in sanctuaries across this conference. Some will be praying at home. Some will be praying when they have breaks at work or at lunch. Thank you for committing your time today to pray for General Conference, for our delegation who will be going on our behalf, and for me, your bishop, as uh, we seek to lead the church spiritually uh, in the days before, during, and after General Conference. So regularly I'm asked, what will happen at General Conference? Underneath that question are all sorts of fears and anxieties. Uh, generally, people are thinking only about one thing. Will the United Methodist Church divide or will it stay together? Will we change our uh, standing on homosexuality or will we become a more inclusive church? Some of my fellow bishops and I have been talking about what's going to happen on the Sunday after General Conference. At the end of the day, General Conference is not the church. The church is where you live, where you serve, where you work, where you worship. So I've imagined what the Sunday after General Conference might be like in the Tennessee Conference. Somewhere on that Sunday, a youth choir will sing. Children will come to a children's time. Sunday school teachers will teach the stories of Jesus. People will worship and praise God. They will mostly be unaffected by the events that have taken so much time and energy the days before at General Conference. Somewhere on the Monday after General Conference, a food pantry will open. A shelter for homeless will be uh, available. And people will serve Christ in the world just as they did on the days before General Conference was convened. Not long after I was ordained, in the baptismal ritual, these words were read. The church is of God and will be preserved until the end of time. For the conduct of worship, for the due administration of God's word and sacraments, and for the maintenance of Christian fellowship and discipline, and the edification of believers, and the conversion of the world. As you know, the mission of the Tennessee Conference is to discover, equip, connect, and send laying clergy leaders who shape congregations that offer Christ to a hurting world one neighborhood at a time. That's our call. That's the work that your delegates will go believing, and that's the work they will bring back to us. When we come to annual conference this year, we're going to celebrate offering Christ to a hurting world one neighborhood at a time. Let this be our focus in the days to come. Let this be the prayer that guides us. And let us not be distracted by the voices that would lead us away from our truest mission, to follow Jesus, to make disciples, and to equip congregations who can make disciples and change the world. I ask that you continue to pray for us. Pray daily for your delegates. Help us to seek to be spiritual leaders before during and after General Conference as we seek to offer Christ to a hurting world. Thank you.